G'day, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install and set up an FTP server using FileZilla version 1.0.1. Let's get started. So recently, FileZilla released their update to version 1.0.1. .1. Ever since they've done that, there's been a lot of questions floating around both YouTube and Reddit on the setup and configuration process for an FTP server. Now, if you take a look at their wiki page, I'm not surprised why it's completely blank in the frequently asked questions and tutorial pages. Now, I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. I'm sure you know how to get to the download link. Click it, run it. Click I agree. Now you don't need the bottom two options, but definitely leave the top two. Go ahead and click next, next, next. And here you need to set yourself an administration password. Now this isn't the password that people are gonna to connect to to uh, access your files. This is how you will remote in to manage the console page, the application itself to be able to say which files you wanna share, uh, to be able to create or delete users and groups, change passwords, all that good stuff. Go ahead and set yourself a password there. Once you've done there, just go ahead and hit install. Once that's complete, you should see this panel. If you don't see it, don't stress. Just go ahead and click on start FileZilla server, click yes. Go ahead and click that administrator icon and click connect to FileZilla FTP server. Go ahead and type in the password that you set during the installation process and click okay. This brings up our administrator panel. Go and click server at the top configure and we need to set our IP address of our machine. So for me, I already know my address. If you don't click on start menu and type CMD to open up command prompt and type IP config 10.0.10.13. I recommend setting a static IP. It's going to make things a lot easier later on when you're trying to remote in. Um, if you haven't done so, go and do that now. Don't allow DHCP to give your server the IP address. Otherwise, every time your router turns off and on or your computer turns off and on, it will give it a new IP address and you won't know what you're logging into. Uh, so go ahead and type that address in up here, 10.0.10.13 in my case. Leave the ports at port 21 because we can set firewall rules later on to be able to translate that to something else. Leave the double snake eyes. Go ahead and click on passive mode. Now this is required if you plan on remoting in to your FTP server from outside of your home network. I guarantee you, you're gonna be running through a firewall with NAT running. It's gonna cause you issues. And it's gonna put it into passive mode and not allow them to see the directory. So if that's the problem, this is where you need to sort it out, passive mode. Go ahead and click custom port range. Give it a custom port range. For me, I use 40,000 to 41,000. You can set it to anything you want as long as it's not within a port range that's already used on your network. Now we're gonna to go to users. Uh, click add and give it a name. I recommend uh, setting it to the name of the person who's going to log on to that account and that way you can always reverse track if they've done the wrong thing on the server. Go ahead and click the password button. Of course you wanna set a password. Give it a strong password, unlike me. And now we're going to click add over here on the right hand side for mount points. Now this is where we're going to set the directories that this user has access to. Um, if you haven't already got a folder that you want to share, go and create it. Um, I don't recommend using your root disk. However, I only have one disk. So my folder is gonna be on the system disk and I'm just gonna call it FTP. Um, if you've created a folder deep within file structures or maybe on your desktop, go and open that folder. Click up the top here so it highlights the path, press uh, copy, and now we're gonna come back over and we're gonna paste that in native path. Um, now here's where people are coming unstuck with the settings, virtual path. Now this essentially is a network path. So we're gonna use double forward slash and we're gonna give it any name we want. You can have different virtual paths for everyone who logs on and they're still gonna see the same directory. It's just gonna have a different name for them. So you can play a bit of a joke on your mates and you can call it your potato or whatever. In this case, I'm just gonna call it server. Now, the next step is writable. Do you trust this person? Do they need write access to your server or do they just need read only? If you don't trust them or they don't need access to be able to write, don't tick that box. If you trust them, um, go ahead and tick that however. If you give them right access, they can delete files from your FTP server. They can also edit and modify files. 
trust-based system. Um, that's pretty much it for the configuration. You can go and set speed limits if you want to. Um, if you've got lots of users, you can create groups and then just create users and assign those users to groups, which will give them different permissions, will give them different access to different folders, because obviously you can create multiple folders and give them access to all different folders across your computer. We've just kept things simple. We've shared one directory. We've created one user. We didn't need a group. We can go ahead and click apply, click OK. So now let's talk about connecting to your FTP server and port forwarding. If you're connecting to your FTP server locally, so from inside your network, we don't need to worry about any port forwarding. You're just going to connect using the IP address that we assigned to the FTP server earlier. So for me, in my instance, it was 10.0.10.13 .10 or whatever your IP address is for your server. And we're just going to use port 21 because we left all that standard. We're inside of our network, we're not vulnerable. However, if we're connecting remotely, so from outside of our network, we need to set up some port forwarding rules. To do that, log in to your router's console page and set up two port forwarding rules. If you're not sure what to do here, pause the video. I've got a couple of tutorials. I'll put one up the top here and a couple down below for some of the more common routers that people use. Now we're going to go to either NAT or port forwarding, depending on the brand of router you're using. And we're going to create the first one is a port range. Uh, so for some routers, you'll put the first port and then colon the second port. Uh, some will have two separate boxes, a to and a from. So uh, we're going to, in this case, set it to 40,000 to 41,000. And we're just going to leave that the same both inbound and outbound or internal and external. And we're going to point that to your FTP server. So 10.0.10.13 .10 for me. And then the second rule is we're going to translate port 21 to something random that's not going to get sniffed by a hacker on the outside. Uh, so for this example, we're going to use port 21 as our internal, and then for our external, we're going to use port 2180. Go ahead and save all that. Now you need to make sure that you are aware of what your external or your public IP address is for your home or network, wherever this FTP server is. So go ahead to Google and type in, what's my IP address? Write down that IP address because that is how you connect to your computer or your server from outside. Um, you'll go ahead and you'll connect using that external IP address and port 2180 in this instance. Why do we do this? When you connect to your FTP server, you're going to send your password and your login details via port 21. The FTP server is listening on port 21. It says, great, I'm happy with your password. Now we're gonna send files backwards and forwards. We're not gonna do it on port 21. We need that open for people to connect. We're now gonna talk on port 40,005 for this particular range. It'll pick a random port in that range between 40 and 41,000, and you will send for files backwards and forwards using that port. If someone else connects, they'll be assigned a different port and so on and so on. That's why we do this. It keeps things nice and simple. You don't need a thousand ports as a range, but hey, why not? Give yourself plenty of room, plenty of redundancy. Hope this helps you guys. I hope you found this useful. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Just hit that subscribe button, it does help out the channel. And if you're not quite sure if there's something I've brushed over or perhaps something I missed, throw a comment down below and I'll try and help you out the best that I can. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.